What an honor it has been to work with museum professionals to create exhibitions. I had a wonderful collaboration with Michelle Robinson, curator at the Figgy Art Museum. She suggested the focus of the show, gave me time to create much of the work, then designed a wonderful layout. This show was composed of 23 large oil paintings, charcoal and pastel drawings, and photographs, all united by the theme of the show. Here are some excerpts from the brochure she wrote to accompany the show. This exhibition of works by Thomas Jackson brings together imagery of two of Iowa's most prized political and celebratory events, politics and state fairs. Iowa's prominent political activism and its early political caucuses contribute much to the momentum of the national conventions and garner Iowa significant attention in presidential campaigns. The exhibition includes images of past and current political figures, dealing with the press, getting their messages across, meeting and greeting voters, making speeches. Alongside the political imagery are paintings of the bright lights and orgy of excess at the Iowa State Fair, the single largest event in the state of Iowa, and a showcase for Iowa products, agriculture, and industry. Both of these events involve large crowds of people, patriotic music, banners, blatant advertising, and an entertainment factor, and both phenomena occur in the summertime. Thomas Jackson, in Making Images That Make People Think, sees a definite correlation between the two phenomena. During the 2004 political campaign season, he became fascinated with the ways in which political parties used images to create policy positions and the ways in which images took on different meanings depending on the viewer. The frenzy of national conventions takes on a carnival-like quality in two of Jackson's larger paintings, Democratic Convention and Republican Convention. Likewise, the annual state fair images display an American boosterism and patriotic quality alongside the glaring lights and big signs encouraging the purchase of deep-fried Twinkies, cotton candy, and gallons of lemonade. In all of these political images, the picture we are given is, in a way, a filter through which we view the candidate. It both distances us from the real thing while it projects a message. Thomas Jackson has made the ambiguity of images, whether of a lemonade stand or a political speech, the real subject of this exhibition. Michael Moraine, the arts writer for the Des Moines Register, wrote a review of the show, accompanied by several color photographs of my oil paintings. Here are a few of his comments. Something clicked in Jackson's brain. Both the political conventions and the state fair crank up visual noise to nearly blinding, deafening levels. That realization prompted him to paint an ambitious series that celebrates two of Iowa's greatest traditions. The resulting exhibition is Iowa Pastimes, Politics, and State Fairs. Don't miss it. Don't even be late. Although both activities represent some of Iowa's proudest traditions, they also share a lot of the same over-the-top excess and flat-out hucksterism. When it all comes down to it, candidates and carny barkers aren't so different from one another. The megawatt lights, the slick pitches, the promises, ultimately, it's all a competition for attention. I had the opportunity to work with Sean Ulmer, then curator of collections and exhibitions at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art, on an exhibition using one medium, photography, with many themes within the artworks. It's always a pleasing surprise for me to see how art professionals select works that speak to each other and design a cohesive exhibition that heightens the effectiveness of each work. In the brochures Sean wrote to accompany the show, he states in part, Cedar Rapids artist Tom Jackson is perhaps best known for his paintings. American narratives will focus on a different medium altogether, photography, which Jackson came to only recently. The splicing together of his separate, seemingly unrelated photographs creates fascinating and intriguing new narratives. These complex images give us an entirely new look at the American scene. He went on to write, Following a long line of artists interested in the common, everyday occurrences in life, Jackson's artistic take on them is quite new and refreshing. It is perhaps Robert Frank's seminal mid-1950s series, The Americans, that finds greatest resonance with Tom Jackson's work. 
Both Frank and Jackson seem to share the same guiding spirit in capturing the essence of what it means to be an American, albeit separated by more than 50 years. Unlike Frank, however, Jackson's pairings and compilations create a new view of the American scene, one that captures a sense of life in the early 21st century. The Dubuque Museum of Art chose to show my figure drawings and paintings in a two-person show along with my friend and fellow drawer, Priscilla Steele. Priscilla and I thought our drawings really spoke to each other, so we proposed this joint exhibition. We collaborated with Stacy Peterson, curator at the Dubuque Museum of Art, who selected work and designed this exhibition titled Dialogue Human. The museum announcement for this show stated, in part, Steele and Jackson have been drawing the human form since the late 1960s. In 2008, Jackson joined Steele's life drawing group, meeting two to three hours twice every week. From these prolific sessions ensued a constant stream of vast bodies of work from each artist that are united in their source, but disparate in their execution and sensibilities. Drawing is the most fundamental skill of an artist's training. Since classical Greece and the Italian Renaissance, the human body has been held as the artistic ideal, elevating life drawings to the gold standard of artistic training. Through the works of Steele and Jackson, Dialogue Human explores the life drawing as an intersection and common thread sustaining an infinite dialogue. It has been terrific to find venues that were interested in exhibiting my oil paintings, drawings, and photography, and a variety of realism-based themes. I continue to work on several projects simultaneously. It's great to wake up in the morning and work on the project I feel passionate about that day. It keeps everything fresh.